Having worked for many tiring hours on your application, you are delighted to receive an invitation from your dream law firm to come in for an interview. However, this delight is quickly followed by a sinking feeling in your stomach as your anxiety begins to mount. Fortunately, there are proven methods to increase your confidence and show the legal recruiters how impressive you are. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and on this channel we discuss the strategies and tools that help us to successfully navigate our law degree. Now today I want to talk about law interviews and I want to show you the techniques that I use to ensure that I thrive and didn't simply fall flat on my face. Now specifically, I want to look at how you can use your personal brand to improve your presence in a law interview. I want to tell you the techniques that I use to prepare for the interview and also how you can go about approaching questions and how you can reconceptualize the interview so it works in your favour. The typical piece of advice that you're given as a law student when it comes to your interviews is that you must stand out and be unique. But how can you actually do this without making a complete fool of yourself? I believe what this advice really means is to build a personal brand and allow that to shine within your interview. The good thing about framing the advice in this way is that it makes standing out and being unique an ongoing process which you think about and build well in advance of the day of your interview. In other words, instead of just rocking up to your interview and trying to think of some quirky way to make an impact, such as, oh, I'm gonna show this interviewer a magic trick, which I think is cool, which is one strange thought that I had when it came to approaching one of my first one or two interviews at a law firm, you actually build up what makes you unique and creative and different throughout your time at university so that when it comes to the interview itself, you've already got a good sense of who you are and what you really stand for. For instance, my passion for education led me to create a personal brand rooted in helping others to become better at learning and lead more productive lives. In my free time, I created an online language school in Spain, I volunteered at local schools and I created the Digestible Notes website. It was a process which I went through which subsequently enabled me to stand out and be unique at interview and secure offers from some of the best and most prestigious law firms in the world. Obviously, I don't need to go into too much detail as to why you should be putting in lots of preparation into your interview. The more crucial question then is, what should you be preparing? What sort of information should you be looking for to ensure you do really well in the interview? When I was in my second year of university, sending my first applications to law firms, my research almost solely consisted of a quick glance of Chambers' student guide in the misguided belief that this general picture was all I needed for interview glory. But the reality was completely different and it took me a couple of painful rejections before I came to this realisation and a slightly awkward interview as well where I got stumped on the, the very predictable question of why I wanted to work at that law firm. Fortunately, I discovered a really cool process that works really well when it came to preparing for the interviews. And so instead of just going through the marketing material and their website willy-nilly plucking out particular facts that I find interesting, instead I used something called intent-based research. And this essentially was a list of questions I always asked myself when it came to researching a law firm. And they were as follows. What makes this law firm different from their top three competitors? Differentiating factors may include a focus on particular practice areas, the way their training contract is structured, the structure of the law firm more generally, etc. What work have they done recently that I find truly fascinating and what implications does it have commercially? What are their three core competencies that they expect of training solicitors and what evidence do I have to demonstrate them? And finally, who will be interviewing me? This approach to researching law firms not only kept me focused on the task at hand, but also made sure that I kept in mind potential interview questions that could be asked of me. For instance, the four questions that I asked myself during research could answer the following interview questions. Why do you want to work for this law firm? What makes this firm unique? Describe a case we've worked on recently that's interested you. Talk about an area of law that fascinates you and what global impact that may have. Describe a time when you demonstrated X, Y and Z or any of their competencies. What makes you particularly suited to work at this firm? Why are you different from other candidates? And much, much more. Not only this, but I found that the final question that I asked myself about trying to find out who the interviewer could be allowed me to get 
a step ahead of everyone else when it comes to the interview. And I always found this information wasn't too tricky to find. And by finding it, I could learn a little bit about them so I'm not so nervous when it comes to the interview. And I've also got potential background information about the recruiter that I could thread into my interview answers. Research has indicated that demonstrating similarities with the interviewer gives you a much higher chance of success. So by putting in the work beforehand to find out who could be asking your interview questions, you're giving yourself a much better chance of succeeding and getting that job. I think it would be fair to say that most people view interviews as very one way. So the interviewer asks the questions and then you as the applicant respond. Framing interviews in this way makes it sound like an exam which you've essentially been engineered to stress about, having endured 18 plus years of standardised testing in school. It's not healthy to think about interviews in this way, and that's especially true of law interviews, as your job as a lawyer will be to interact and answer questions from clients on a daily basis. The healthier approach is to reconceptualise interviews as conversations. Simple, friendly chats, not a trial by words. One method I found really works is to reverse the interview. So instead of just being bombarded with loads of direct questions, try to ask the interviewer some questions too. Try to get them to open up about the firm and their own thoughts and feelings. If you can get engaged in like a nice general chit chat about the law firm, about the life of a lawyer and who you are as well, then you can start to feel the tension drop and it just shows that you're very confident with speaking to colleagues and clients and you're gonna come across a lot better for it. When it comes to answering the questions themselves, the standard advice is to follow the STAR method. So you explain the situation, you give them the task that you had to do, you show them the action that you took and then the result that happened from that action. Now, on the one hand, this is a great way to avoid waffle and to very clearly and concisely structure how you approach a particular situation. However, there's also a major downside to this too, as I shall now explain. The downside of the STAR method is that it sucks the personality out of your responses and you lose your personal story. At the end of the day, humans are sold on emotions, so if you fail to show your real self when answering a question and get too caught up in what you are saying rather than how and why you are saying it, you are missing out on a big part of your selling potential. Again, I have a solution to this, the superstar method. The superstar method is very similar to the star method, except for you become the superstar in your particular story. You're building authenticity and building a compelling narrative that guides the interviewer from one point to the next in a very truthful and very convincing way. Now, I'm not too sure whether I explain that very well, so let's look at an example. So for instance, let's say that you're asked by the interviewer to show or explain a situation where you displayed leadership. Now, using the STAR method, it would look a little bit like this. Situation, I was a committee member for the University Law Society. Task, to plan the annual law ball. Action, I had to arrange the venue, organise the catering and market the event. Result, the law ball was a great success and everyone was happy. This really isn't great. The answer is quite blocky and you never really get into the flow of the answer and neither does the recruiter. You see, you're going from the situation to the task to the action and then the result in isolation. They never really flow into a compelling story. So this is where the superstar method comes in super handy. So let's have a look at how we'd answer the same question using the superstar method. As a committee member of the University Law Society, I was responsible for leading a number of different initiatives, including the arrangement of the annual law ball. Given the fact that the Law Society is the largest society at my university, coordinating the event involved a number of weeks of preparation and diligent teamwork with the other committee members. In particular, organising catering, marketing the event and arranging transport involved careful budgeting and effective delegation of responsibility. All this effort resulted in a successfully run ball for over 200 society members and over £3,000 in revenue, which was 30% more than the previous year's returns. I hope you can see the difference between the two approaches. The superstar method puts you as the focus of the story and you build a compelling narrative and build authority around who you are and what role you played in that particular answer. So you're demonstrating leadership in this example by putting yourself as the focus of the story and taking the recruiter or the interviewer from the S, the situation, all the way through to the result in a nice, coherent, seamless manner. The final tip I shall leave you with is a simple one. 
practice. Practice your tone, practice your mannerisms, and practice your inflections. You see, fear is an imperfect mechanism, but you can overcome nervous twitches and negative body language by putting in the work in advance. If you've been invited to interview, you've already impressed the law firm, and the interview is just a confirmation of how great you are. So if you're at this stage, just go out there and give it your best shot. If you're currently sending applications out to law firms, then you're probably also going to really enjoy my playlist on crafting the perfect law applications. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you found this video useful and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.